Hey there! This is day number 118, and I'm glad, my friend, that you have joined me again. Today we read Joshua 14 and 15, Psalm 73, and our second reading in Acts 23. Turning now to Joshua 14. Yesterday, in this book, we heard an inventory of the kings conquered so far and details about the allotments of land for the two and a half tribes east of the Jordan. Joshua 14 Heading The Division of the Territory West of the Jordan What follows is an account of how the land of Canaan west of the Jordan was divided among the people of Israel. Eleazar, the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders of the families of the Israelite tribes divided it among the population. As the Lord had commanded Moses, the territories of the nine and one-half tribes west of the Jordan were determined by drawing lots. Moses had already assigned the land east of the Jordan to the other two and one-half tribes. The descendants of Joseph were divided into two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. However, Moses gave the Levites no portion of the territory. Instead, they received cities to live in, with fields for their cattle and flocks. The people of Israel divided the land as the Lord had commanded Moses. Heading Hebron is given to Caleb One day, some people from the tribe of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal. One of them, Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said in Kadesh Barnea about you and me to Moses, the man of God. I was forty years old when the Lord's servant Moses sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out this land. I brought an honest report back to him. The men who went with me, however, made our people afraid. But I faithfully obeyed the Lord my God. Because I did, Moses promised me that my children and I would certainly receive as our possession the land which I walked over. But now, look, it has been forty-five years since the Lord said that to Moses— That was when Israel was going through the desert, and the Lord, as he promised, has kept me alive ever since. Look at me. I'm eighty-five years old, and I'm just as strong today as I was when Moses sent me out. I'm still strong enough for war or for anything else. Now then, Give me the hill country that the Lord promised me on that day when my men and I reported. We told you then that the race of giants called the Anakim were there in large walled cities. Maybe the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out just as the Lord said. Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him the city of Hebron as his possession. Hebron still belongs to the descendants of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, because he faithfully obeyed the Lord, the God of Israel. Before this, Hebron was called the city of Arba. Arba had been the greatest of the Anakim. There was now peace in the land. Joshua 15 Heading The Territory Assigned to Judah The families of the tribe of Judah received a part of the land described as follows. The land reached south to the southernmost point of the wilderness of Zin, at the border of Edom. This southern border ran from the south end of the Dead Sea, went southward from the Akrabim Pass, and on to Zin. It ran south of Kadesh Barnea, past Hezron, and up to Adar, turned toward Karka, went on to Azmon, and followed the stream on the border of Egypt to the Mediterranean Sea, where the border ended. That was the southern border of Judah. The eastern border was the Dead Sea, 
all the way up to the inlet where the Jordan empties into it. The northern border began there, extended up to Beth Hogla, and went north of the ridge overlooking the Jordan Valley. Then it went up to the stone of Bohan. Bohan was a son of Reuben. From Trouble Valley up to Debir, and then turned north toward Gilgal, which faces Adumim Pass on the south side of the valley. It then went on to the springs of En Shemesh, out to En Rogel, and up through Hinnom Valley on the south side of the hill where the Jebusite city of Jerusalem was located. The border then proceeded up to the top of the hill on the west side of Hinnom Valley at the northern end of Rephaim Valley. From there it went to the springs of Nephtoah and out to the cities near Mount Ephron. There it turned toward Baala, or Kiriath Jearim, where it circled west of Baala toward the hill country of Edom, went on the north side of Mount Jearim, or Chesalon, down to Beth Shemesh, and on past Timna. The border then went out to the hill north of Ekron, turned toward Shikeron, past Mount Baala, and on to Jamnia. It ended at the Mediterranean Sea, which formed the western border. Within these borders lived the people of the families of Judah. Heading Caleb Conquers Hebron and Debir As the Lord commanded Joshua, part of the territory of Judah was given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Judah. He received Hebron, the city belonging to Arba, father of Anak. Caleb drove the descendants of Anak out of the city, the clans of Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai. From there he went to attack the people living in Debir. This city used to be called Kiryath Sefer. Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who succeeds in capturing Kiryath Sefer. Othniel, the son of Caleb's brother Kenaz, captured the city, so Caleb gave him his daughter Aksa in marriage. On the wedding day, Othniel urged her to ask her father for a field. She got down from her donkey, and Caleb asked her what she wanted. She answered, I want some water holes. The land you have given me is in the dry country. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. Heading The Cities of Judah This is the land that the families of the tribe of Judah received as their possession. The cities farthest south that belonged to them, those that were near the border of Edom, were Kabzeel, Eder, Jagur, Kina, Dimona, Adada, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Zif, Telem, Bealoth, Hazor Hadata, Kiryat Hezron, or Hazor, Amam, Shema, Molada, Hazar Gada, Heshmon, Beth Pellet, Hazar Shual, Be'er Sheba, Beziothia, Baala, Iim, Ezem, El Tolad, Chesil, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Lebaoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Rimon, twenty nine cities in all, along with the towns around them. The cities in the foothills were Eshtaol, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, Enganim, Tapua, Enam, Jarmuth, Adulam, Sokoh, Azeka, Sha'araim, Adithaim, Gedera, and Gederothaim, fourteen cities along with the towns around them. There were also Zenon, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Dileon, Mizpah, Jokthel, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kabon, Lahmam, Chitlish, 
Gederoth, Beth Dagon, Naama, and Makeda, sixteen cities along with the towns around them. There were also Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Nezib, Keila, Akzib, and Marisha, nine cities along with the towns around them. There was Ekron and its towns and villages and all the cities and towns near Ashdod from Ekron to the Mediterranean Sea. There were Ashdod and Gaza with their towns and villages reaching to the stream on the border of Egypt and the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. In the hill country there were Shamir, Jatir, Soko, Danna, Kiryath Sefer, or Debir, Anab, Eshtemoa, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, eleven cities along with the towns around them. There were Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afeka, Humta, Hebron, and Zior, nine cities along with the towns around them. There were Maon, Carmel, Zif, Juta, Jezreel, Jokdeam, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities along with the towns around them. There were Halhul, Bethzur, Gedor, Ma'arath, Bathanoth, and El Tekron, six cities along with the towns around them. There were Kiryath Baal, or Kiryath Jearim, and Rabbah, two cities, along with the towns around them. In the desert there were Beth Araba, Midin, Sekaka, Nibshan, Salt City, and Engedi, six cities, along with the towns around them. But the people of Judah were not able to drive out the Jebusites who lived in Jerusalem. The Jebusites still live there with the people of Judah. Whew! And let's turn to Psalm 73. This is one of my favorite psalms because it speaks to an intellectual problem that so often bothers me. The turning point is verse 17 in this poem by Asaf. The Hebrew title is By Asaf. Psalm 73 God is indeed good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. But I had nearly lost confidence. My faith was almost gone because I was jealous of the proud when I saw that things go well for the wicked. They don't suffer pain. They are strong and healthy. They don't suffer as other people do. They don't have the troubles that others have. And so they wear pride like a necklace and violence like a robe. Their hearts pour out evil. Their minds are busy with wicked schemes. They laugh at other people and speak of evil things. They are proud and make plans to oppress others. They speak evil of God in heaven and give arrogant orders to everyone on earth, so that even God's people turn to them and eagerly believe what they say. They say, God will not know, the Most High will not find out. That's what the wicked are like. They have plenty and are always getting more. Is it for nothing, then, that I have kept myself pure and have not committed sin? O God, you have made me suffer all day long. Every morning you have punished me. If I had said such things, I would not be acting as one of your people. I tried to think this problem through, but it was too difficult for me.
until I went into your temple. Then I understood what will happen to the wicked. You will put them in slippery places and make them fall to destruction. They are instantly destroyed. They go down to a horrible end. They're like a dream that goes away in the morning. When you rouse yourself, O Lord, they disappear. When my thoughts were bitter and my feelings were hurt, I was as stupid as an animal. I did not understand you. Yet I always stay close to you, and you hold me by the hand. You guide me with your instruction, and at the end you will receive me with honor. What else do I have in heaven but you? Since I have you, what else could I want on earth? My mind and my body may grow weak, but you, O God, are my strength, and you are all I ever need. Those who abandon you will certainly perish. You will destroy those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, how wonderful to be near you, O God, to find protection with you, the Sovereign Lord, and to proclaim all that you have done. Let's return to Acts 23. Paul, before the council, cried out words that divided the council. Brothers, I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors, and I'm on trial because of my hope in the resurrection of the dead. Note that no one said, But who says that Jesus has risen from the dead? The leaders could produce no proof that Jesus had not risen from the dead. And this fact also refuted the teaching of the sect of the Sadducees, the priestly sect. So the resurrection of Jesus touched a very raw nerve for them. In the night, Jesus came personally to encourage Paul. Acts 23, starting at verse 19. The commander took him by the hand, led him off by himself, and asked him, What do you have to tell me? He said, The Jewish authorities have agreed to ask you tomorrow to take Paul down to the council, pretending that the council wants to get more accurate information about him. But don't listen to them because there are more than forty men who will be hiding and waiting for him. They have taken a vow not to eat or drink until they have killed him. They are now ready to do it and are waiting for your decision. The commander said, Don't tell anyone that you have reported this to me. And he sent the young man away. Then the commander called two of his officers and said, Get two hundred soldiers ready to go to Caesarea, together with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen, and be ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight. Provide some horses for Paul to ride and get him safely through to Governor Felix. Then the commander wrote a letter that went like this. Claudius Lysias, to His Excellency, Governor Felix, greetings. The Jews seized this man and were about to kill him. I learned that he is a Roman citizen, so I went with my soldiers and rescued him. I wanted to know what they were accusing him of, so I took him down to their council. I found out that he had not done a thing for which he deserved to die or be put in prison. The accusation against him had to do with questions about their own law. And when I was informed that there was a plot against him, 
at once I decided to send him to you. I have told his accusers to make their charges against him before you. The soldiers carried out their orders. They got Paul and took him that night as far as Antipatris. The next day the foot soldiers returned to the fort and left the horsemen to go on with him. They took him to Caesarea, delivered the letter to the governor, and turned Paul over to him. The governor read the letter and asked Paul what province he was from. When he found out that he was from Kilikia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers arrive. Then he gave orders for Paul to be kept under guard in the governor's headquarters. Let's pray together. Our Father and God, help us not to be misled by this world's propaganda. Help us not to be misled because of envy. Lord, Satan's forces want us to envy those who lead wicked lifestyles, people who are praised because they live the good life, possessing everything we think is cool, and who proudly scoff at the idea of there being a God. Then we get bitter, and we wonder if there is any use in obeying you, our God, or in listening to your word. Lord, help us come to our senses. Please help us see the truth instead of being misled by this world. Speak to us through your word and use our fellowship with other followers of Christ to bring us to Asaf's conclusions, which I read now. What else do I have in heaven but you? Since I have you, what else could I want on earth? My mind and my body may grow weak, but you, O oh God, are my strength, and you are all I ever need. Those who abandon you will certainly perish. You will destroy those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, how wonderful to be near you, O oh God, to find protection with you, the Sovereign Lord, and to proclaim all that you have done.